Okay, let's go ahead and just install Windows 7 on our MacBook. Now, I've already installed Parallels desktop application. Now, that's just the first step to get that initial application on, on your machine. So if I pull up Parallels right here, this is most likely the first screen that you see. At this point, I don't have any virtual machine on here. I don't have Windows in any form, and I want to begin the process of installing. Now, the thing to note is Parallels is separate from Windows. So Parallels just enables you uh, to get started, but you are going to need a valid Windows um, install. So whether that's a DVD, an image file, or on a USB, you'd still need to have a full working copy of Windows. Now, for this example, I'm going to walk through, I'm using a ISO drive, an ISO disk, which is a disk image of a DVD. So I just have one that I, I carry around with me. So that's what this is right here. So if I bring open just real quick, this is just a, uh, a pretty large file. If I show up, show the, uh, the properties for it, it should be like two gigs or so. Yeah, two and a half gigabytes. But um, I'm going to install it from here. So I've already copied this down to my, my, my desktop. You may have this on a thumb drive. You may even have a DVD of Windows, which is uh, certainly not uncommon. I just don't have a DVD drive on my MacBook. So one of those is what we're going to work with. If you have your Windows files saved in another format, you can migrate them. But what we're looking at is actually installing Windows from scratch. So as a new install, the same way you would if you had a, a new PC. All right, so I'm just going to select this and I come down here and click continue. Now, by default, Windows starts searching for it. If it didn't find it and it showed me that it couldn't find something, then it, I could go ahead and locate it manually. But because this is on the desktop, it's pretty simple for, for Parallels to find. So if, if, if it didn't find it, like I'd say, then you'd want to go ahead and locate manually and just search your drives for it um, if it's on a thumb drive. But uh, Windows is, uh, Parallels is going to go ahead and search for it. This is the only copy it's going to find because it's the only version I have uh, installed or, or ac accessible from the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and just click go continue. Now, a couple things here. Express installation, you want to use this because what this is going to do is going to automatically install Parallel tools for you. It's a separate product from Parallels, but it's free. But it enables a lot better integration between your Windows side and your Mac side. So check this option. Just keep this selected uh, when you do this. Now, because this is a, a corporate version of Windows, this is what our team uses, it does not require a product key. At this point, you would need to enter a valid product key to continue. So you're going to need your serial and your, or your product key, uh, and you'd want to enter that at this screen. So come on down here, continue. So a couple of options, to just kind of it tries to configure Windows for you just based on your options. I think you can leave it set to productivity and you'll be fine. Now here you can give this a name. Um, you can leave it Windows 7. If you're going to install, you can actually install multiple versions of this. It's kind of neat. But at this point, um, I'm going to leave it at Windows 7. It doesn't matter. Um, if I had other users, I could make sure this is available for them. So I'm not going to customize any settings before installation, and I will create an alias on my desktop. And here it goes. So it's just going to walk through installing it. At this point, you kind of see Windows the way you would if you installed it on a regular uh, PC, right? This is the initial Windows start screen that you would expect to see um, if you just uh, bought a brand new PC or you just installed a new copy of Windows on an existing PC. So here goes the setup. And again, this is going to be the normal setup for Windows. Okay, so now it's going to reboot into Windows. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to speed up the video clip so we can get through this last section pretty much. But it's just the Windows going through all of its uh, setup process. So it's going to reboot a couple times. Your Mac won't reboot, but Windows will. And after it does it this final time, what we'll see here is uh, the final process. So now we've actually installed Windows on our Mac and then come down here and we want to select a home network if that's what you're working from. Again, this is all very familiar if you've ever uh, set up a new uh, Windows install on a PC. This is the same process. You can see that it's trying to connect to my, my home network. Here we can choose what we want to share. If you want to sh set up home sharing and on the next screen you'll get your home sharing code. Again, this is all just uh, straight Windows type uh, setup info. So 
when we get to the next one, we'll actually see the, uh, the, the little code if you wanted to share it with other PCs or in your network. Okay, so that's all there is to it. At this point, we actually have Windows running on our Mac. We have uh, both operating systems running together. And I know that because up here I can see my Parallels window. Now, one thing to know, there's a couple different views here in terms of uh, how Parallels works. We're actually in, by default, coherence mode, which means your Windows screens are going to work just alongside of your Mac. So right here's my Mac Finder, right? This is the Mac. If I come down here to Windows, I have my Start menu, and I can bring things up like my, my Mac documents. And so this is what? The Windows Explore, right? So these two are working together, and they're side by side, and you can move fi files back and forth. If you like this kind of workflow, that totally works. Uh, if you install Storyline, then you'd have a Storyline application window up above, and you could have your other Mac applications. Another option is to kind of separate the two and kind of work in two different windows. And I'll show you what that might look like if you, if you prefer. So I'd come up here, and I would say Exit Coherence. And what this could do then is if I maximize this and say put this as full screen, it's actually going to put it on a separate desktop here. So I can use my, my three finger swipe here on the trackpad and I can move between the two and I can jump back between Windows and the Mac. And so it kind of separates the Windows environment that way. I actually prefer this workflow just to work over here uh, separately. I still have access to my files, right? So if I created a, let's just create a new text file, right? So if I say uh, save, and I save this to the desktop, and I'll call this one David's Notes. So you see it here on the Windows desktop, and if I swipe back over here, it's also available to me on the Mac. So Parallels Tools lets us share the files back and forth between the two, and you can create your own folders, documents, Dropbox, or anything else like that you're working with, and you can uh, share the files back and forth.